If you have Zechariah chapter number four, we're going to begin reading at verse number one. And um, I need you to follow me on this today. It says, and the angel that talked with me came again and wakened me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. This is the fifth time in Zachariah's ministry that he had been shown or awakened or given uh, some type of vision from a heavenly visitor. And said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick. All of gold, a candlestick, all of gold. And uh, this is, if you read Revelations, I don't have time to, but I'll call out the passage, chapter number 1 and verse 13. You see the people, or that is the church. The candlestick represented the church. The candlestick was made of gold with a bowl upon the top of it. Um, while I'm reading this, uh, Brother Devante, would you get slide number two? I think it's clearer on slide number two and put that up there for the people to see of the uh, Zachariah's vision of the... Yes, you see the bowl on the top? Yeah. All right, and that you see the candlestick there. And uh, it said with a bowl on top of it, and you see the seven... And uh, his seven lamps, seven drams thereon, and seven pipes. You see the pipes going from the bowl to the uh, lamp. You see that? And two olive trees. You see the olive trees? By it. One on the right side and of the bowl and the other on the left side thereof. I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? These two trees, what is the meaning of this that I see? And the angel, said, angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? Do you not understand what you're looking at? And I said, No, my Lord. Thank God, with all thy getting, get an understanding. He said, I don't know. What it is. And then he says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto, now listen to this, unto Zerubbabel. Everybody say Zerubbabel. This is the word of the Lord. Now, Zechariah is a prophet. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. This is the prophet. Listen to me now beginning to speak the word of the Lord to the governor. The preacher is getting ready to tell the, the politician what God has to say. Amen. And not vice versa. Zechariah said, I'm with God. And here's what the Lord have told me, Mr. Governor, to say to you. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, that is, not by army, nor by wrath or force, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Sometimes God's mood and God's disposition is revealed in the way his name is used. He's called here the Lord of hosts. <coughs> Excuse me. Hosts, the Lord of the armies of Israel. God over the 
armies of heaven. Uh, Lord of hosts. Literally, Lord of war. God says, not by army. Not by force. But by my spirit, saith the Lord. Then the question was asked. Who art thou, O great mountain? Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. <laughs> Isn't that something? And he shall bring forth the capstone thereof with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel that have laid the foundation of this house, his hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts have sent me unto you. You'll know that this is the word of the Lord. When it comes to pass. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice. And shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. With those seven. They are, look at this, the eyes of the Lord. Which run to and fro. Through the whole earth. Speaking of God's omniscience. He sees everything. God is everywhere. <coughs> Excuse me. Then answered I and said unto him. What are these two olive trees? Upon the right side of the candlestick. And upon the left thereof. And I answered again. And said unto him, what are these olive tree branches which through the two golden uh, pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? What are they? And he answered me and said, knowest thou not what these be? And I said, no, my Lord, I, I don't know. And he said, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. I want to preach today from the, uh, direct your attention to the seventh verse and the question that is asked in verse seven. Who art thou, O great mountain? Who art thou, O great mountain? I want to preach to you, this is deliverance. Part three, mountain, who do you think you are? Who art thou, O great mountain? Preach me, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Cause your face to ever shine upon us. Give us to walk in holiness and to do the things that you would have us to do and be all you'd have us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Mountain, who do you think you are? If you, if you notice, um, let me just dissect this. Our text personifies mountain. It personifies mountain because a mountain is not a who. A mountain is a what? Yet in our text, he asks the mountain, who 
do you think? Um, oh, mountain, oh, great mountain, who art thou, oh, great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, he says, who are you? He says, you're going to be made a plain. Isn't that something? Even though he uses the Hebrew word har, H-A-R, which is translated in the Hebrew, a hill, a mountain, um, a mountain range, hill country, that kind of a thing. Many times the meaning of a word is not derived from its meaning in the dictionary, but it is derived from how the word is used. So he's using the word mountain metaphorically. Uh, to describe the challenge, the issue, the problem that is standing before Zerubbabel. This governor is up against what appears to be insurmountable odds. Odds that are so great that they are referred to as a mountain. We have mountains. We have mountains. I have mountains. You know, I'm, I'm, I hear from people uh, in my uh, bid for the general board. I hear from people who... Um, uh, tell me, wouldn't be be careful because, and they, and they're giving me wise advice. There are people who will <coughs> try to use your stand against you, and um, it's amazing how Satan has infiltrated infiltrated the church, and um, instead of us speaking to Zerubbabel. Will and Zerubbabel speak to us. Um, a lot of politicians like to invite the preacher, and you sit and you hear their platform and their program, but they don't wait to hear yours. And they tell you whatever you believe. As long, you know, as long as you agree with me, we're all right. But if you have positions that disagree with mine, then hold them to yourself. Now, I'm not going to violate any rules and call any names. Now, on the other side, you can call names all you want. They don't get a visit from the IRS. You know, it's amazing. People say there are no election interference. Yes, there is. It's election interference when you muzzle one side and prosecute one side and limit what one side can say and let the other side say what they want to. That's interference. Mark Zuckerberg apologized himself for uh, the 2020 election. How he sat down and met with members of the opponent's administration. And whatever they said was misinformation that needs to be suppressed, take it down. And the man took it down only to find out that it wasn't misinformation. And he has come out himself and apologized and said this time he won't do that. But that's four years too late. You see. You see. So things are coming out. Now, The country, if I don't mention this, I believe that God will lift his anointing from me. And I, I, and I am anointed. And uh, I, I want you all to know uh, I'm the same anointed preacher when I'm talking about things that you say amen for as when I tell you to wear shoes. <laughs> same preacher. Same preacher. So now if you hold your amens back because you sore about having to wear shoes, 
I don't want you to say amen when I hit something you agree with. So I, I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. Say amen. amen. Uh, you got to be able to take instructions amen. and be just as jolly, just smile just as much, be just as friendly, be just as godly when you're getting instructions as you are uh, when you're not. See, because many of you don't want to be instructed. You want confirmation. You want agreement. See, and you're not going to get it all the time. Say amen. See, it's called being mature. That's what it's called. Praise the Lord. It's called being sanctified. <clears throat> Having the Holy Ghost. But there is something that's going to take place next week that horrifies me. That stuns me when it shows me how huge the mountains are. I told you last week that President Bill Clinton said in the 90s that he wants to keep abortion. You still talking about that? Yes. He wants to keep abortion safe, legal, and rare. And when he said that, I, I said then, safe for whom? There's, you know, abo every abortion kills somebody. Uh, the only abortions that don't kill anyone is the botched abortions. Something went wrong and the baby lived. If it's not botched, if it's successful, somebody dies. And 99 times out of 100, the somebody is the most innocent in society. And if a society is judged on how it treats its weakest and most vulnerable, our society is barbaric. Bunches, I hate them. It's a wonder if we don't have more school shootings, mall shootings, carjackings, people being killed, seniors being killed. It's, ama it's amazing. We're, we're killing the most innocent. The most innocent aren't the newborns. The most innocent are the unborn. The least of these aren't the newborn. The least of these are the unborn. And as believers, we have ample scripture. And as people who believe in science and medicine, there's ample evidence that the thing that is in, I mean, it's amazing you got to discuss this, that's in a woman's womb is a human being. I mean, it couldn't have been a puppy, can't be an alligator, can't be a dog, can't be a Martian. Praise the Lord. What else can it be? Yet, next week, show them the bus. Next week, next week. That, that, look at it. That, that is a reproductive freedom bus coming to town. We have gone from safe, legal, and rare to riding it on the side of the bus in big letters. Reproductive freedom, they're lying to you. There's no reproduction in abortions. Putting it on the side of a bus. What does that tell you about where we have gone uh, spiritually? And uh, I don't know who the people are standing there. Uh, ladies, uh, one of the ladies looks like she has on AKA colors. And, uh, uh, and if you're sanctified and you're in that, you need to, you need to stand up. Amen. You need to come out, but you're, so you ought to stand up. So it's amazing the ones, it's amazing the ones it's amazing, what, what amazes me is the silence of Christians. Y'all getting uncomfortable? The, the silence of Christians. We're some weak folk. We are putting on, the, God is going to judge this nation. We have, we have gotten so low spiritually that we now put the slaughter of the unborn on a bus and and now it's spoken of in euphemistic ways because if it was if they said what it was folk would run the bus out of town but everybody knows you're talking about abortion 
And as a race, I said it last Sunday, I'll say it again. Black folk are not reproducing at replacement levels. As I stand before you, we're not reproducing at replacement levels enough to sustain us for the next 25 years as a people. Now, the government knows this. Politicians knows this. They've known it for some time. That's why they kept that border open. They're bringing in our replacers. And you're sitting there grinning. You're grinning and you're smiling. And uh, you think it's a good thing. Keep grinning. You remind me of the people. I, I was at uh, a particular grocery store one day, and they were bringing in auto, uh, the automotive cash registers. And the workers were standing there smiling. Look at what we're getting. We're getting new. Cr Look at this. I said, that, that's your job. You're sitting there grinning. They're bringing in your replacement. Automation leads to layoffs. So now we're so low. You're talking about a mountain. We're so spiritually depraved that you can take that which you, that was a time that it, that it was not spoken of in polite society. If someone did it, they would, didn't want anybody to know. Praise the Lord. Families didn't want anyone to know. Families, you know, lie about it. So, yes, she miscarried, you know. Oh, wasn't, she wasn't pregnant anyway. Find out we were wrong. Stomach was that big. Find out we were wrong. Because it was not something honorable that someone would be proud of. Now we're so spiritually low that we can ride it on a bus and ride into town and call it a crusade. And they're coming to our state Monday. You're talking about mountains. You're talking about being depraved. And then they have convinced us uh, in, in addition to that, because the number one killer of black people, I hate to tell you, it's not the police. It's not the police. It's abortion. Abortion kills is responsible for, for, dis, for, for our demise more than the other five leading causes of death combined. Nothing eliminates us like abortion. The abortion industry in America, Planned Parenthood knows this, cannot, could not survive without black people. They love us. That's why the majority, 78% of Planned Parenthood's abortuaries are within two miles of high black population centers. And our preachers don't talk about it because many of the preachers don't talk about it because they don't want to upset their party. You need to be in the party's face telling them, if you don't do something about this, I'm gone. That's what you need to be doing. Watch me get mad. It's going to cost me some votes. The, the black church, our church, d d doesn't have the courage of the LBGTQ plus community. Right. Right. Homosexuals have bigger gonads yes, sir. than the average black preacher. Right. Straight one. Average homosexual. Got to have a stronger backbone. Average lesbian, she's stronger than the average, praise God, missionary. Why, why would you say such a thing, Reverend? You know, I mean, it seems like to me this close to my anniversary, I would be talking about something else. I, 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 would preach a, I would preach a gravy train sermon. But I'm wooden solid. I'm not going to change. Thank you, Don. I'm 
I'm not going to change. Amen. Why would you say that about them? When President Obama was president, the homosexual community got everything they wanted from him. Everything. Everything. Do you know why? He understood that, uh, he understood them, because when they didn't get what they wanted, they would heckle, they would threaten not to support, they would make noise, because they understood he's a politician. And to get what we want, you need to know that if you don't give us what we want, we won't support you. They got everything. Thing they requested. Now my question is, why aren't we that way? Why aren't we? Or perhaps, 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 Sister Wanda, we are that way. And our demise doesn't matter to us. I don't want to believe that. I don't want to believe that we don't care if we don't exist I would like to think that we want to remain I would like to think that we want to remain generationally you combine that with the, the new and thank God for our baby section combine that with the new uh, adage to have smaller and smaller families black folks used to have 10, 12, 13 children now one if that then uh, we put off marriage almost 40 before you even walk down the aisle with smaller families. For people who run the numbers, and most of you don't, but for people who do, they see the formula, and it's not a good one for us and our preachers and our voices who is supposed to represent us say nothing. You know what they're talking about? Project 2025. Oh, you got to be aware of 2025. Project 2025 is a suggestion from the Heritage Foundation, which is a think tank. It is not a political group in terms of lawmaking. It can't, it can't make any law. They can't produce any policy. They can't do any of that. We would rather get diverted into being scared about something like that while the death bus. While death rides through our neighborhood and you run out there and take a picture. Standing beside the bus. And then post the thing online. <sighs> Somebody say mountain. mountain. Amen. What was the mountain that was standing by in front of Zerubbabel? The mountain was this. How do I finish this half-built temple that the government stopped me from building? Government, King Artaxerxes, halted the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. God has set the children of Israel free. The Persians conquered the Babylonians. Just as the prophet Jeremiah said, and uh, after 70 years, Babylon fell. The Persians conquered the Babylonians. And it was the Persians who set Cyrus that Isaiah had prophesied about 140 some odd years before the man was born. Cyrus was never saved. God said, you don't even know my name, but I'm going to use you. 
And then Israel got mad about that. <laughs> God called Cyrus, a man who didn't even know him, his anointed. And called Cyrus his shepherd. Isaiah chapter 45. Read your Bible. You'll see what I'm talking about. And so it came to pass just as he prophesied. When the 70 years was up. Jeremiah 25 and 11. Jeremiah was specific. He said it's going to be 70 years. The temple fell in 586 B.C. Seventy years later, 516 B.C. was the temple finished and rededicated. But in rebuilding it, the government stopped the project. King Artaxerxes sent a letter and uh, gave his edict after the temple was half complete. Bible says in uh, um, Ezra chapter number four <clears throat> and um, verse 21. I don't have time to read it all. He says, give ye now commandments to cause these men to cease and that this city be not built until another commandment shall be given from me you can't stop stop right where you are take heed now that you fail not to do this why should damage grow to the hurt of the kings now when the copy of the king's of King Artaxerxes, letter was read from Rehum and Shemshiah, the scribe, and their companions. They went up in haste to Jerusalem to the Jews and made them to cease by force and power. Stop them. Then ceased the work of of the house of God which is at Jerusalem so it ceased in the second year of the reign of King Darius of Persia and when it stopped it ceased for 16 years because government Stopped the house of God. The world of religion changed their doctrine. That's happening now. You know, people call me controversial. I'm not controversial. I'm Church of God in Christ. Our church has a pro life statement, our church has a statement that had been voted on. By the only doctrine expressing and law making body of our church, which is the General Assembly. Yes, sir. I'm in line with the church. Yeah. And I'm in line with the Bible. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'll read it to you at some point. So, government stopped it. So, you know what the people did? Here, God tells us the preachers, y'all not saying amen today. The preachers. Changed their preaching style. And they said, you know what? Since the government won't let us build the temple, here God tells us, uh, perhaps, you know, it ain't time for the temple to be built. You know, since government has stopped us and you got to go with the government now. You can't, can't go over government. Praise God. Praise God, government's right, government is God. Uh, we, we need to go along with them. And in Haggai chapter number one, verse two, says, Thus speak the Lord of hosts, saying, this is what God told Haggai, the prophet, who prophesied also with Zechariah. I'll bring it all together in a minute and you know, I got to catch a flight, so y'all 
I, I'm not going to be before you all day, but I sure love teaching it. So you need to lay the foundation. Amen. See, because people, you know, there's a lot of people, people might disagree with you, but when they finish, after you all go out and eat, you know, I have problems with, with what the preacher said. Just ask them this. Was he wrong? Well, 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 I don't know whether he's wrong. I just don't like Well, I don't care what you like. The issue is, is he right or wrong? Simple, simple. Was it, is, it, is it scripture or not? It's simple. It's simple. See? See? And I'm going to propose something. I'm a whole, I'm a whole head guy. In these political times, don't simply ask yourself, which of the party platforms are promoting good things? That's, that's part A of the question. Part B, which might be, which may be, coach, stronger than A. It may, part B might need to be A. Ask yourself which of the parties are actively supporting evil things. Not who's supporting just good things, but who's supporting evil things. Now, I believe that same-sex marriage is evil. I believe homosexuality is evil. I believe ad uh, abortion is evil. I believe cutting off little boys' sex organs because a little confused boy thinks he's a girl and messing up and making a man shift groove in his body calling it a vagina is evil I believe it's evil to give beta blockers and, and all kinds of hormones I believe it's evil to give it to grown folk I believe it's doubly evil to give it to children and to call a child uh, in school by a pronoun that the parents don't agree with and not tell the parents I believe now in my book that's evil and if it was your child you would think it was evil that's evil Bible speaks of inventors of evil things. Do your homework. You know, I can't, I can't point out. Do your homework and find out who has a support for those things in their platform. And if they do, you ask God, how can you support that? And if God tells you how, call me. Tell me what he said. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to change. You're looking at a guy who is just simply too far gone. The truth is right. Hey, guy, I'm watching the clock. In chapter two, 1, verse 2 says, Thus speak the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. They, what they did when the government stopped them, then they adjusted their religion they adjusted their ethos. They adjusted their teachings to go along with what the government said. So even though they were released for the express purposes of rebuilding the temple, when the government stopped them, they changed their doctrine. So they felt, they felt good walking in disobedience. They felt good and so, in order to make the people feel better about themselves, all the preachers said, oh, yo, no, no, don't worry about that temple that's half built. That's just standing there. Don't worry about it. It's not time yet. God has his time. That's the way, that's the way we do with people whom we like. You know, if, if you don't like them, they got the devil in them and they're going to hell. But if you like them or if they can to you, 
God has his time and God is going to save them when God gets ready. But now if it's somebody you don't like and there ain't no kin to you, look at them. Look at them. They got the devil in them. They ought to get right. What's wrong with them? Throw their loved one up. You know, I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting on God. God's going to save my son. God's going to save my daughter. God's going to save my husband. God's going to save my wife. But if it's somebody else's wife or husband or child, you got the devil in you. You're going to hell. God's going to. See, that's the way we do. That's the human condition. And it's wrong. We've got to stand on the word of God and pray that God save everybody. But God's word doesn't change. Which is the point that I'm trying to make. It doesn't change. So they changed their doctrine. And everybody was feeling good about disobeying God. You know what the Lord did? He did what he's doing now. He got in the economy. He got in the wealth. God sent global. God gave them all of it. Climate change, global warming, global cooling, all of it. God says, I'm going to make sure y'all can't get this wrong. That's what, that's what they're doing now. You can't miss. At first they said, you know, I, when I was a young man coming up, the, the, the fear was that the planet would freeze. I mean, we're supposed to be frozen by now. That's what, was, that's what was being said then. And uh, so uh, they changed it because when they would have the climate freezing conferences, they had to cancel a lot of conferences because the cities they went to were snowed out. But that ain't going to work. So then they came up with global warming. But now, then with that, it didn't work all the time because... Some of the places where it's supposed to be hot, it got cold. You know, God has a sense of humor. So then they came up with one that can't miss. Climate change, which everybody knows that the climate changes. It never stays the same. That's the nature of the climate. Say, so, well, you know, you say what you want to. We're in a warming trend. How, how do you know that that's not normal? Well, the records show that it's abnormal. How long have we been keeping records? 100 years? 200 years? 300 years? Come, uh, we can't have been keeping them 300 years. Country not 300 years old. Uh, it's not that old. Am I right? So how do we know that these things haven't happened before? The answer is we don't. That's right. But here's what we can find out by reading the Bible. Well, that when men walk in disobedience, God gets in the economy. God gets in the weather. God interferes to get man's attention. Now that's in the Bible. And it ain't in the Bible in just one place. God told them through the prophet, and I'll, I'll explain that in just a minute. God, God got him now. He said, now, what you need to do, look at this. He said, you have sown much, verse 6, and bring in little. Economy. You have not enough. You drink. Listen, he said, you have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you don't have enough. You drink, but you have not. Uh, you, you are not filled with drink. You put clothes on. But there's none warm. That's all of them. He's hitting them all. And you earn wages. And, and he that earneth wages earneth them. Earneth wages to put it into bags with holes in them. That's inflation. Your money don't go as far. You can't buy enough. You put on clothes and you can't get warm. And God says, the problem in verse 5 and in verse 7, he said, you need to consider your ways. America, you need to consider your ways. Church world, we need to consider our ways. Consider your ways. He says, go up into the mountains and bring wood and houses. And I will take and build my house and I'll take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. He 
said, look at this. You're so disappointed. Verse 9, you look for much, and lo, it come to little. And when you brought it home, what, what, what made it to the house, God spoke. So it wasn't that thief. God says, I blew on it. I blew it away. I fixed it where the money didn't go as far. Well, I don't have any money problems. You don't have any today. If you got them if God decides you're going to have them. See, the Lord can let something happen that can consume all of that. Praise the Lord. Praise, it happens all the time. Smarter people than you have gone broke. Jumping off buildings. Killing themselves. The plan failed. God says, I blew upon it. Why? Why? Why did I do this? Said the Lord of hosts. Because of my house. That is waste. And you run every man to your own house. See, you have left my house unbuilt, half finished, but you took care of your house. Verse 4 says, you said it's not time for the Lord's house to be built. But verse 4 asks, but is it time, O ye that dwell, oh, for you... Is it time, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? Is it time for you to dwell in your well, complete, well-groomed, beautiful houses while the house of God lie waste? The reason they let it lie waste is because the government stopped it. But instead of trying to fight, they, they, they gave in to government. They said to government, we're with you. And they let God's house. Sit. And God's house set unfinished. I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. It, it was left unfinished for 16 years. Dogs were defecating in it. Bird droppings in it. Spiderwebs. Animals running to and fro in the house of God. When it rained, it rained and it mildew all in God's house. The very thing that I sent, set you free to rebuild, you have ignored. Then when God would look around, he saw plush communities. Well manicured lawn. Wonderful infrastructure. Look at that nice library over there. Look at those business buildings. Look at that ball diamond. Praise the Lord. Is that a football stadium? All of that's in place. But God's house. But God's house. Look at all these black folk in here today. White too, but look at you. Oh, you got your hair all dutied up. Suits looking good. We're smelling good. We're riding good. We're driving good. And they're slaughtering our own. And we ain't saying nothing. They're, they're, they're punkifying our boys. The feminization of black men is a real thing. Our men are acting more and more effeminate. Some of you girls like feminine guys. I don't understand that, you know. That's another sermon, though. Let me get back on this. All of this stuff that's going on. In this day and time, and uh, uh, there's no, there's no, there's no outcry. There's no outcry. Church is now electing not to use the word church. Church is now approaching God. We're taking the crosses out. When you come to church now, you dress better to go to the toilet than you go to the house of God. Oh, that, that listen, that shows your attitude toward God. Oh, I'm right. And uh, I guess I'm taking too long. And so, that was a problem. According to Ezra, chapter number five and verse one, God raised up two olive branches. Then, Exodus, Ezra, Ezra, five and one, then the prophets 
with an S. Hagar, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Idu, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, even unto them. And when they began to preach, then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, and began to build, praise the Lord, the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And uh, with them were the prophets of God helping them. So God raised up these two preachers. And construction started. Now it's interesting. This is just little stuff that I like. And uh, you'll be bored by it. But for a minute, Haggai and Zechariah tag teamed. and They preached at the same time. See, they preached for a few months together. Chapter 1 of Zechariah, Haggai, verse 1, speaks of the sixth month. The word of the Lord came to Zechariah. Haggai, it was the sixth month uh, in the second year of King Darius. That's when, and then the Bible tells us, in the four and twentieth day, uh, still in Haggai, uh, chapter 2, in the four and twentieth day, of the ninth month in the second year of King Darius, Haggai was preaching. You see that? But now, when you go over into the book of uh, Zechariah, it says, in the eighth month in the second year of Darius. So if, if Haggai was still preaching in the ninth month, that meant he had to have been preaching in the eighth month. Am I right? So in the eighth month, uh, God gave Haggai some help. Praise the Lord. But uh, by the eleventh month, Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 7, the 11th month, now Zechariah is preaching alone. Here God's ministry had come to a close. Now it's Zechariah. He has nobody to tag team with. And yet God began to use him. The Lord appeared to him multiple times. And our text represents the fifth vision. That God gave him. God knew he needed to see something. So that he could get the governor to do his job. I guess brother Rocky we might need to pull this train. So what happened was. The Lord showed. Yes. Zechariah in chapter 4. The vision of the church. I hear the pages turning. Sounds good to me. I'm glad you bring your Bible. I don't understand people who come to church with no Bible. You just sit there and look, no Bible. I guess in most churches, preachers don't preach from the Bible either. <laughs> and it's a, bad, it's a bad day, you know. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't go to any other class without your other stuff. Folk know you're not serious when you show up at the gym. No bag, no water, no gloves. You knew. You show up to ride with us. The riders, we, we size you up. You show up on a, bike, on a bike and you're not even clipped in. Oh, you're dead. No helmet, no gloves, you're out. We know, we know right then that, that this ain't going to take long. Because you don't have your tools. Why, we, why do we do God like that? 
Why do otherwise intelligent people, and some of you have come up in the church, and you act like you hadn't been taught. Right. Sitting there with your leg crossed, no Bible, and you were raised in the church. I rebuke you right now in Jesus' name. You ought to know better. Oh, Lord, this is not a pre-anniversary sermon. But it's the one God gave me. And if you're not ashamed, I'm ashamed for you. Because you knew you, you, we're in the house of God. And if there's anyone's word we need, we need the word of God. We need the word of God. We need to know what the Bible says. So the Lord showed him a candlestick. And uh, let him see the trees. Show him slide number one. Let them see slide number three and just flash it up there and let the saints see it. So the candlestick had two olive trees by it. All represents the Holy Ghost. The trees represents an endless supply. A supply being given to the church. I thank God today that I have an endless supply of power. I have an endless supply of God to give me strength to go through in these last days. And uh, when he showed him these things, he asked him, said, do you know what they mean? And he said, no, my Lord. And then the Lord answered and said, Here's what I want you to tell Zerubbabel. Go find that politician. Oh, Lord. The politician. Hallelujah. Who is doing something that I won't done. See, it doesn't matter to me whether it's a Democrat or a Republican. Doesn't matter to me whether it's a male or a female. I don't practice identity politics at all. And I'm not in the politics of personal destruction. All I want to know is, what are you for? And if it lines up with God, we can make it. If it doesn't line up with God, then I'm going with God. Someone said, wouldn't you going to end up on the wrong side of history? I said, that's all right. I just want to end up on the God side of history. I want, him, I want uh, my epitaph to read that I stood uh, with the God of the Bible. And uh, that's a mountain in Zerubbabel's way. He said, you tell him that I said not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Some of you here today, you have mountains in your way. You have difficult things that you're dealing with. The devil is trying to discourage you, telling you that it's not going to work out, telling you that you can't make it and that you can't overcome. And I'm here to tell you he's telling you a half lie. And the truth of the lie is you can't do it on your own. But the other side of that is, if God be for you, who can be against you? With Jesus in your life and obeying the word of God, reading the Bible and standing on God's word, the Lord is able to give you power. And anytime you see oil flowing, it's not just power, but saints, it's revival. It's not just revival. But it's joy, joy in the face of mountains, joy in the face of obstacles. God said, maybe you don't have what you need to overcome these things. But he said, if you stand on my word, if you let me give you the Holy Ghost, if you let me be your source, I'll give you strength to overcome and mountain no matter 
how great you may appear to be, no matter how large you may appear to be, I got a word for you. You're going to be brought down to size. You're going to become a plane. God is able to chop down every mountain. God is able to give you strength. Hallelujah. I want somebody to just picture the mountains in your life. Picture what's standing before you. Picture how Satan is trying to discourage you. And tell the devil, God's going to bring you down. You're coming down. Satan, God's going to tear your kingdom down in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Don't be intimidated. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Just live right. Hallelujah. Let him fill you with the Holy Ghost and tell the Lord, I'm going to stand for your word. I'm going to stand on your word. I'm going to stand on God's truth. I'm going to stand with the Bible. I know what the enemy is saying. He's saying your friends may ostracize you. They may criticize you. They may talk about you. Let them say what they want to say. People have mouths. People have opinions. Let them talk. Let them post. Let them write. Hallelujah. Who cares? Because their word is not the word of God. The only thing that matters is what God said. And it doesn't matter how much the enemy may plot against you. The Lord is able to take it and to bring it down. Somebody shout, it's coming down. Every mountain is coming down. Every hill is coming down. Say yeah! Yeah, Lord! It's coming down! Somebody lift your hands and praise Him right now! Praise the Lord because you believe that it's coming down. And you believe that the same hands that God anointed. Look at your hands today. The same hands that the Lord anointed to start the work. He will use those same hands to finish the work. Paul said, being persuaded of this very thing, that he's able to complete that which he's begun in you. Whatever the Lord has started in you, God is able to finish. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to give you power to come out on the other side. He's going to give you power, hallelujah, to put the doubters to a shame. He's going to give you power to win when the world said that you were going to lose. He's going to give you power. He's going to give you power to walk in victory. Thank you, Lord. Family members, friends, looking at you funny, talking about you. But we serve a God who promised us that he would never let us be made ashamed. He's going to give us power to come out with the victory. Say it! Say it! Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Praise him like you know that you've won already. When they begin to build, the devil tried to stop them. But I heard the people say, ain't no stopping us now. 
good God Almighty. And God gave them the victory. And in Ezra chapter 6, they dedicated the temple. God told me to tell you, you're going to dedicate your temple. You're going to win. Hallelujah. He's able to save, to heal, to deliver. He's able liar, to bring you out. He's able and he's given me a word of deliverance. A word of deliverance. If you're going through, if you're in it, if the devil has stopped your progress, I want you right now to just praise the Lord even though it seems like you're not getting anywhere thank him because the Lord told me to tell you you're going to finish you're going to finish not by might not by power but by his spirit up but I want everybody who has the Holy Ghost and you got that endless supply of all you got that spirit of God pouring on the inside of you I want you to give the Lord praises like you haven't before I want you to glorify him like you haven't before my God he's gonna heal your child hallelujah you're in a battle some folk are battling with tough things hallelujah the devil trying to afflict your baby. The devil trying to afflict your body. The devil trying to afflict you. Some of the things that you're going through, they're not political at all. The devil has attacked you, but the same God who spoke to Zerubbabel is the same God who spoke to Joshua. And Joshua is the high priest. So God is using his word to operate in the world of religion, in the world of politics, in the world. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And all you got to do to qualify today is just ask yourself where you live, where you're standing, where you are. Just ask yourself, am I on earth? Am I in the world? And if the answer is yes, then you're in God's victory territory. Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. You ought to praise him because you're in the victory territory. Loud! Ah, mountain, who do you think you are? You're coming down, 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 down. Everybody who has faith to believe God. Rush this altar so we can speak. We can declare 
to the mountain. You're coming down. Ah, mountain. You're coming down. Not by might. Not by power. But by my spirit. But by my spirit. But by my spirit. But by the spirit of the Lord. It's not because of what my last name is. It's not because of what family I'm in, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Who are you? Who art thou? Great mountain. Yeah, you're big, but you're in the wrong place. You're big, but you're in the wrong place. You're standing in front of the wrong one. You're big, but you're standing in front of Zerubbabel. You're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong place. Hallelujah. And because you're in front of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, you will become a plain. You're going to be brought down to nothing. Hallelujah. Father, we stand before you today. We stand before you. We stand with mountains. We stand with mountains in our way. We stand with mountains before us. We stand with obstacles. Life is full of them. We stand with things. The devil wants block this and block that there are situations here that I have not touched in this sermon except to call them mountains hallelujah we're diverse people people are dealing with different things we stand oh God we stand oh God and we declare we declare to the mountain we say to the mountain we question the mountain with hallelujah a defiance who do you think you are who do you think you are you will not stand before me you will not stand before me and i will not climb you for i'm not called to climb you i'm called to speak to you and to tell you to be removed and be thou cast into the sea in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus loose here get out of the way God bring deliverance God bring freedom God bring clarity God bless us to be able to see what we couldn't see bless us oh God the mountain was blocking our view but when you get through the mountain will be gone and we'll be able to see clearer and further than we've ever seen before oh lord god do it god do it god do it in the name of jesus and we declare that is done we'll get busy obeying god we'll get busy building our businesses we'll get busy living holy we'll get busy living right we'll get busy being the person that you called us to be we'll get busy speaking up for the lord busy Yes! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! I told you Thursday night that the chains were falling. I tell you today that the mountains are crumbling. Hallelujah! 
Thursday night, chains were falling. Sunday morning, mountain crumbling. The Lord sent in an earthquake, tumbling these big boulders, making them fall, getting them out your way. And you're going to go in to the house of God in your project with shouting, saying, God did it. With shouting, saying, Jesus did it. With shouting, saying, the Lord brought me out. With shouting, saying, it was Jesus. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. With shouting, saying, to God be the glory for the things that he's done with shouting saying had it not been for the Lord who was on my side the enemy would have swallowed me up but God I feel better. 